Guys, I'm telling you, after seeing this movie, I really want my own Niffler. If you guys don't know what a Niffler is, check out the rest. Hey guys, what's up? My name is Zach, and I'm bringing you guys a new review today for Fantastical Beast and Where to Find Them. It's a, the new prequel spin-off to the Harry Potter series that J.K. Rowling break gave us. And I gotta say, this is one of my most anticipated movies of this year, and I'm so glad to finally bring you guys this. So coming in the Fantastical Beast, I was very pumped. I love Eddie Redmayne. I love the cast they have. I love the story of pretty much like an Indiana Jones kind of thing where he's catching these monsters and stuff. Now, for people who don't know what this movie is, it takes place in around the 1920s in New York City. So this is something different for Harry Potter fans where we... To get to see the American side of the wizardry and it's very cool where we follow a young author slash explorer Newt Scamander who is in charge of pretty much finding creatures beasts, monsters whatever it be and documenting them and putting a book together but as he's finished with this he stops away in New York to meet up with someone and well arises happen you have a muggle that finds out about this you have a briefcase that goes missing and a dark order and a sinister thing is happening to go around plus very many monsters get out and loose and run around the city and it's up to newt and his new friends to find out what is going on all right guys now first off i'm gonna start with the performances of course we gotta start with eddie Rudman. how's he do he's an oscar winning actor he's oscar nominated again at last year Eddie Redmayne can do no bad. He's a great actor, he's great in this movie, and he steals and he embodies Newt Scamander. He took this character full force, and I didn't see Eddie Redmayne the whole time. I saw Newt Scamander. Every outlook, every way he acts, the way he does his spells, all very unique and cool. Another person in here, Dan Fogler, who plays the muggle in this movie that's friends with Newt. And I gotta say, I've never been a huge fan of Dan, but I gotta say, this character worked for me. His character is um, Jacob Kowalski or something like that. He's very different, he's very unique, and I actually really enjoyed his character. It's different to watch him, and it's kind of cute, but there are some parts where I was like, oh, okay, this guy's alright, let's move along, he's kind of kind of annoying me. But overall, I ended up really liking the character. So, of course, we also have our two female leads, who, the blonde kind of annoyed me and I think after seeing this movie you'll kind of see that she's kind of just this typical blonde but she has that cute aspect and that wizardry vibe that I know the Harry Potter series sometimes embodies into its characters so I'm not going to give that too much slack once I kind of got used to that tone of the character I was fine the other one though who works for the Ministry of Magic in the Americans is I really enjoyed her character some parts she kind of pissed me off at but as the story goes on and progresses I really did start enjoying her character now, people are probably wondering how's Ezra Miller character how How's Colin Farrell character? What I can say about their characters is Ezra Miller, in my opinion, was actually wasted in this film. He has a part, and it's I can't say it's big, but it's not super big, and it's just kind of a was a waste. He didn't really show much acting chops. He was kind of just there to be a no name. And Colin Farrell, same way. I think he was very monotone and one noted. I think his character is cool and unique. And there's a certain mystery behind his character, but overall, he wasn't that interesting to me. And as me, coming from a person who loves the lobster with Colin Farrell, it kind of was a disappointment to see Colin Farrell not have more to do in this film. Now, let's talk about the beasts and the monsters in this. Whole load of them. There's so many of them, but there's a couple memorable ones. Some of them, I don't even remember their names, which kind of disappoints me. But the main one that everyone's going to come out of this movie and love is Niffler. He's this cute little fuzzball thing that just loves stealing jewelry. And every scene he was in was just laugh out loud, adorable, so fun and unique. And I enjoyed the hell out of this. There's also a little stick one that's very much a kind of a plant. That one was so cool too to see him crawling around. He his unique ability is he can pick locks, which is even better. And then we also have this one that I really did enjoy too, where it was kind of this like 
furry type of monkey, but it could turn invisible, and it was just very unique of what all these things, how the beasts would interact. And I mean, there are many beasts throughout this film that you do get to see and go along with, and they're very cool, and you get to learn about them. I also really liked about this is the beasts were, they looked pretty good for CGI, and I, it's really cool seeing how far the Harry Potter world has gone. Now, some of the beasts were a little disappointing, and just like, oh, it looks kind of like a rhino. Other than that, I don't really care. It was cool and unique and different, and I like seeing that element to Harry Potter. Now, I think overall coming into this, the score and the sounds is fantastic. The CGI is great, but coming into this movie, I do have cons. I can't leave the theater without saying these cons, and it's something that did kind of bother me. Story for me was not the best story they could have told. Overall, it seemed like a lot of this movie was set up but it was enjoyable. It's not super dark like some of the last Harry Potter's films had been, but it's a family fun film that has some dark moments to it that you can tell that in the future we are going to see these dark moments, and it has a lot of setup for other films, because I know we're getting four sequels for this series, so I do understand that we're gonna have these sequels, and they have to lit built upon them. It felt like a lot of setup, and there's stuff that comes up, but we don't get to really know more about them, and I know it's all set up for the future, and that's what Harry Potter does, in these kind of worlds and JK Rowling's an author so she adds those elements where it's little implants here and there but I'm curious to see where this story does go with Newt Scamander I'm really excited to see where this character goes I'm hoping they bring back most of the cast from this one because I think it's gonna be really cool to see their interactions and from what I've heard and seen I'm predicting that they're since it's so before Harry Potter they could skip decades or skip a couple years and go ahead into the future and show more into the Americans or show more around the world and I think it's something that this well, this story really can tell. Fantastical Beasts and Where to Find Them is seriously a magical film, and I don't say that just because I love the magic in this film, but I love it. The beasts, the CGI's, all that looks great. Each monster and animal and beast that you get to see has its different unique abilities and different unique selves and looks to it. The characters are fleshed out, and not even if they're not fleshed out, you get enough of them to understand that you want to see more of them, and you already fell in love with them. I fell in love with Newt Scamander. I think he's a great character. The characters that surround him, his partners and friends, some of them annoyed me early on, but overall, I ended up liking them at the end. They're no Ron or Hermione, but I gotta say, they're still there, and it's something that I'm enjoying to see, and see how these characters grow on me. Some of the characters, some of the background details, some of the elements they added to this lore of Harry Potter's universe is even better for me, and I love it, because we get to see more of it. I mean, it's all a dream come true, because we get to see more Harry Potter and more from this realm. There's Easter eggs, there's tidbits. If you're a Harry Potter fan, there's no doubt about it that you are going to enjoy the hell out of this film. And if you're looking for something fun to take the family to, I think you can take your family to see this film and enjoy the hell out of it. I also gotta say, if I really am saying this, I really did enjoy this film, and I'm gonna have to give it a B. Now guys, even though I gave it a B, it doesn't mean I didn't love it or hate it. I just, the the story really did kind of bug me in that whole element of how it was mostly a setup film, but it's a film that I think everyone can go see and everyone will have fun watching with their families or watching with whoever they see a friend or anything and just so people don't know they don't necessarily have to see the other Harry Potters to get most of this film the only begs this pro to seeing those is that it doesn't go over what a muggle is and what some of the spells can do no it's it assumes that most people who are seeing this movie knows these this already so it's going on to it what did you guys think of this make sure to comment down below make sure to like and subscribe and let me know what you guys thought about this I'm really curious to see what people thought of this movie I might be completely wrong you might think this is the best damn movie ever made but for me coming from someone who's not the biggest Harry Potter fan but I really do enjoy the universe and really am getting into this universe and it's starting to build up to one of those it really did surprise me and I really did enjoy it I can't wait to see what they bring to this universe with the sequels down the road but make sure to subscribe like and I hope you guys have a magical weekend have a great rest of your guys's day